The influence of such dominant figures in the terrorist network is not limited to the terrorists themselves, but often includes their hosts. The Taliban has particularly been so affected. Author Gordon Thomas informed Freedom that Mullah Muhammad Omar, the head of the Taliban still being sought by the U.S. and allied forces, has been a psychiatric patient in a Pakistan private clinic and has been seen by a Chinese psychiatrist. Mossad sources say that the Mullah has received electroshock treatment, Thomas said. According to journalist Christina Lam, who interviewed one of Omar's doctors, the mullah suffers fits during which he babbles incomprehensibly and also experiences bouts of childlike behavior where he sits in the driving seat of one of his cars, turning the wheel and making the noise of an engine. Although aspects of Omar's mental instability, along with physical impairments caused by shrapnel in his brain from the Soviet rocket explosion that cost him an eye in 1989, have been covered in the Western press, little has been discussed about the possibility of psychiatric manipulation of the secluded mullah. Colin A. Ross, M.D., author of Bluebird, Deliberate Creation of Multiple Personality by Psychiatrists, indicated to Freedom that the circumstances of Omar's treatment made him suspect the involvement of psychiatric conditioning and control techniques. If he was just depressed, if he just needed clinical treatment, why would he be going to Pakistan and why would he be having Chinese doctors? The facts alone make it pretty far-fetched that it was just regular, routine clinical care, concluded Dr. Ross. Native Afghan and banker Noor Delawari, currently in Kabul, establishing what will be the first private Afghanistan bank, while also serving as an advisor to the Ministry of Reconstruction, said that during the Taliban years, the nation's actual decision makers were those in bin Laden's inner circle. Distinguishing al-Qaeda from the Taliban was difficult because, as Delawari puts it, al-Qaeda and the Taliban were the same. Influential al-Qaeda leaders, al-Zahawi foremost among them, gave directions behind the scenes while public pronouncements, such as the order to destroy the world's tallest statue of Buddha and other cultural treasures of the Afghan people, usually would be authored to the mysterious reclusive Omar. Some Taliban leaders, however, were apparently not so malleable and did not survive the merger with al-Qaeda. Mullah Mohammad Rabbani, second in the Taliban hierarchy, vanished from the public eye shortly after Taliban forces captured Kabul in 1996. In August 2000, when Rabbani was reported to be undergoing medical treatment in Islamabad, a statement released then by Afga, Afghanistan's press agency, reported that Rabbani has had some psychiatric problem for a long time. Rabbani died in April 2001 in Pakistan. When we return from our public service announcement, we'll continue with how psychotropic drugs affect the personality and why they're used in terrorist organizations. Has your child or someone you know been falsely labeled with a mental disorder and given dangerous, mind-altering drugs? If your child has been labeled with ADD, attention deficit disorder, or ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and given psychiatric drugs, there is something you should know. According to leading pediatric medical experts, these psychiatric labels have no scientific basis whatsoever. If you or your child have been abused by psychiatric treatment, call CCHR for help at 1-800-782-2878. Don't wait until it's too late. Call now, 1-800-782-2878. A public service announcement by the Citizens Commission on Human Rights an international watchdog group. Call 1-800-782-2878 or visit our website, cchr.org. The Quran states, spirits, gambling, and idols are evils which you should avoid so that you may prosper. And even while Islamic law is interpreted to forbid use of all intoxicants, substances that would diminish one's alertness or capacity to function, they are found in al-Qaeda and other terrorist networks and in the Taliban, further confirming the presence of drug-oriented psychiatric masters at the core of operations. Psychotropic drugs play a fundamental role in bringing individuals into a state of mind to kill or to self-destruct, as even a cursory review of recent tragedies shows. Drugs are also the most important element to achieve a state of mental subjugation. They break down the will, they open the mind to suggestion, and are a necessary catalyst to radically alter personality. Drugs provide a ruthless psychiatric technician the means to make a person suggestible and programmable. 
They give the technician the blank slate upon which to write. Walter Bauer, journalist and author of Operation Mind Control, told Freedom. If you can program the, the unconscious, you can get the job done effortlessly, and the person won't even know that you're doing it, necessarily, he concluded. Techniques of drug-induced mind control were already being tested by North American psychiatrists 50 years ago as part of the infamous MKUltra and related projects, experiments conducted under the aegis of U.S. intelligence agencies. One aspect of such experiments was to find the exact combination of drugs, hypnosis, and other forms of psychiatric and psychological methods to produce individuals who could be programmed to commit acts of violence, including assassinations. Such techniques, said Dr. Colin Ross, have continued to be employed, honed, and perfected. Just because the MK Ultra program officially stopped in the 1970s did not end use of mind control practices, particularly in other parts of the world. The methods, in fact, appear to have originated in psychiatric laboratories in such locations as Russia and China, not in the United States. As Freedom has extensively reported over the years, the mind-altering drugs of psychiatry are also documented in and of themselves to impair judgment and to induce violent behavior. Recent confirmation of their presence and use in the terrorist network and the political bodies they control is alone cause for alarm. Psychiatrist Aziz Alaboub of Hezbollah has administered drugs in the form of uppers to that group's suicide bombers, according to author Gordon Thomas. Terrorism expert Yosef Badansky has described how Alaboub gave cookies laced with drugs to suicide drivers shortly before they crashed their trucks into the U.S. Marine barracks and French headquarters in Beirut on October 23, 1983, killing 245 Americans and 58 French, with many more wounded. The use of such drugs harks back to World War II, when Japanese kamikaze pilots received methamphetamine injections before fatal flights against American ships. One of al-Qaeda leader Ali Muhammad's friends and trainees, El Sayed Nosair, in prison for life for the killing of Rabbi Kahani, was taking a psychiatric antidepressant drug before his crime. And Osama bin Laden, as reported earlier, has been on anti-anxiety pills. Psychotropic drugs are also a tool of the Taliban. A hospital supplied and maintained by the Taliban in Jalalabad, for example, administered to all of its inmates Thorazine, a psychiatric drug so powerful it has been called a chemical lobotomy. A psychiatrist in northern Afghanistan estimated that he treated 1,000 or more Taliban commanders and soldiers, including Akhtar Asmani, the senior Taliban military leader in the area for whom he prescribed haloperidol, a substance in the same class as Thorazine. Once drugs and their pushers insinuate themselves into leadership roles in terrorist circles or in any profession or society for that matter, a drug culture is produced and supported within those spheres. Quite in addition to their penchant for psychiatric drug use and despite public relations statements and photo ops to the contrary, Al-Qaeda and the Taliban were known to be entrenched in heroin trafficking. Journalist John K. Cooley noted that the Taliban dangled the mainly illusory prospect of a real crackdown on drugs before the West in order to win recognition and favors. In reality, al-Qaeda and Taliban leaders fattened off profits from the drug trade, estimated to have brought up to $8 billion per year into their pockets, with Egypt, Syria, Oman, the United Arab Emirates, and other Islamic nations bearing the brunt of a surge in heroin use after the Taliban took control of Afghanistan. Branding the Taliban the single largest horde of drug dealers afflicting the Islamic world, one writer noted that, in addition to opiates, they also deal in marijuana and hashish, which they push on their Muslim neighbors. Methods used by those shaping a terrorist network also involve psychological conditioning and indoctrination. Subjects are coaxed and or drugged into a frame of mind conducive to violence, death, and suicide. In addition, means of inciting and controlling masses by exploiting broad-based fears, hatreds, and ambitions have been carefully honed by psychiatrists and their despots for more than a century. Their efficacy a matter of record from Nazi-incited anti-Jewish Germany in the 1930s to the anti-Islamic hysteria whipped up in the former Yugoslavia in the late 1980s and early 1990s. The techniques often begin with a standard propaganda tool the redefinition of terms.